Creative Katie, Karen Virchill here. Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Thank you for subscribing. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Today we have a mixed media or art journal tutorial. I've done it on a 4x4 canvas, but you can do it on an art journal page. It's entitled Sand Dollars. Links to supplies can be found in the description box below. Thank you for shopping through my links. So here we have the inspiration for this mini canvas, these sand dollars. I've always loved the sand dollars and these are part of my collection. And even piling them up like this, three of them, is something that I'm going to use in the creation of this mixed media piece. So inspired to do that, I finally got an idea of basically creating my own sand dollar stencil. So I looked at Pinterest and clip art and found one that I liked and then I kind of half traced, half drew my own, made some edit editing and then played around on my silhouette till I got something I liked. And I'm looking at the size. I'm thinking maybe that one was a little big, but I've used it already. So I've learned a lot about cutting stencils and what I would do different as well. So this is a four by four canvas board. And here are, this is half a stencil, half a, a mask. And I think I'm going to put these over here in a stack of three, like I had my sand dollars. And I plan on using some modeling paste, but I want a sea colored background. So I've got green, yellow and bright aqua. And of course my Prussian blue, it is my most favorite one. This is the Deco Art Premium version and I like it. It's thinner, it's kind of halfway in between regular Americana paint and Liquitex Basics. So I'm just putting the paint on here. I do not want this to blend, although not all over blend. I want to see some of the darks and the lights and I want to keep some of that yellow in there as well. But when that Prussian blue mixes with the yellow, mixes with the green, it just turns into this lovely shade that I don't think comes in any other tube. And I absolutely love it. So I'm putting this on somewhat thickly because my plan is to use this Crafters Workshop snakeskin stencil, which when I see it, I don't see snakeskin. I see under the water air bubble seaweed. So, and I just removed the acrylic paint through the stencil. So off camera, I'm cleaning. Oh, no, I, here I'm showing. I'm actually cleaning the back of the stencil because I plan on using it again. So now I'm giving it a dry and I'm going to come back with the same stencil and stencil on top. And that kind of really gives this multi-leveled dimension to your page because you have the original paint, then you took off some paint, and now I'm just stenciling on. And I'm using those same colors. And I'm just using bits and parts of this stencil. And I just want variety. I really like this one where I took out took out a lot and so that you get some of that white that I think that really adds to the background. If you put texture paste through this stencil, it makes lovely texture for under under the water, under the sea kind of look as well. But I'm planning on using modeling paste for something else, so I don't want to have too much of it, especially on this tiny little canvas. If I was doing a whole page, I may have added some in other parts, not where the sand dollars were. I might have put some of the bubbles at the top of the page.
So just little by little, bit by bit. Now I'm using the Prussian blue and I'm just edging. And that's going to frame this little mini canvas. I was able to find some of these mini canvases, not magnetic ones, but I did find magnets that you can peel and stick on the back of them, as well as these 4x4 canvases, and they're in the description box if you're interested. I'm just showing how I clean the stencil. I just spray or stencil, spray, spray on the makeup sponge with my Murphy's Oil Soap. So before I get on to the sand dollars, I'm just mixing up some white paint, and I just want to have some splatter. Just a little bit, it kind of pushes things back a little bit, adds another layer. So now I'm getting up my stencil. So this I have, I've cut out this part and I'm just kind of looking, yeah, I'm going to put three of them there. And this part of the stencil, I am going to use modeling paste. Now this is light and fluffy modeling paste from the Crafters Workshop. This is stuff that I won in a contest of theirs when they were getting 10,000 subscribers on Instagram. And so I just have the shape of the sand dollar. I thought it would be really cool to have the three sand dollars coming out. Now, here's where I ran into some difficulty. You have to dry the modeling paste first, and then I'm layering on it. And when you layer on it, now you have two layers. And so even though the modeling paste, the light and fluffy modeling paste dries fairly quickly, which I love, this was problematic because I wasn't giving it enough time to properly dry. And since I want all three of them and I want to get it done in this one session, I, of course, went a little too fast. And especially once I started adding other meat, wet medium on top of this, I just ran into problems and... I corrected them and I'm going to show you how I did that too. So this is actually a different canvas because I went ahead and finished that one and then I figured out what the problems were. So I'm going to paint these now that they're dry. I've allotted a lot more dry time with um, unbleached titanium and some Shimmery Goodness from the Crafters Workshop. Now, Shimmery Goodness is kind of an iridescent medium, and you can mix it directly with the paint. I prefer putting the paint on and then putting another coat. I just like the effect a little bit better. It occurs to me as I'm editing this video, though, that I could have mixed the unbleached titanium with the modeling paste and then stenciled it through to get the shape and then I would just put a coat of shimmery goodness on top. It's true what they say by the time you're done. So there you know is the kind of the color of the sand dollar and the shimmery goodness it just lightens it a little bit but it gives this nice pearlized yummy shimmery goodness effect to the sand dollar. And as you can see, I've got a couple other little canvases there. I'm doing these um, for a craft market. And I just thought that, you know, kind of doing it assembly line. Of course, don't do that unless you you know the steps. Because when I started, it's like, oh, okay, I didn't, I kind of hit some glitches. So I would do one first throughout, and then you learn how to do it better. And then, then you can do with things assembly line. Well, so when you're working on multiple pieces, you use the heat tool a whole lot less. So now I put the stencil back on and I put the little piece of the stencil back on. So it kind of masks off the other sand dollars. And I'm just using some copper paint to, to stencil on this part of the sand dollar.
This is truly for the person who can't draw. <laughs> Although I, I, I would attempt, I have I've practiced now do, making sand dollars all by myself and, and doing the middle part. And I, and I think I could do that. But this is a one way that we can get around this. So I'm loving that little bit of shimmer that's on there, first with the shimmery goodness and then the copper paint. So I was going to use my Ink Tense pencil to um, shade around the edge, but the modeling paste isn't solid and I didn't want to put any dents on it. So I'm just using the floating acrylic technique. And I'm just edging this with, I think this is burnt umber, just to edge it to make them stand out and then shade where they're overlapping. I love using acrylic paint, paint because it is permanent, as are the Inktense pencils. You can use watercolor, but when you go to put a varnish on this, if that's what you want to do, it may reactivate and you may end up with a problem. Or it could wreck what you have done. So I'm just giving it a dry before you add more shading. And I always start with a little bit and then I add it. Then I decide that I'm going to splatter with some gold or some bronze. I'm not sure which one I grabbed. Now, I, while I finished these off with the three sand dollars in modeling paste, I came across, came up with another way of doing it, and I think I will do this more if I make any more. So here I am using my Inktense pencil, and I am tracing the sand dollar on paper that I've painted with the unbleached titanium and a coat of the shimmery goodness on top. Then I'm just putting in this stencil and I'm stenciling on the center part of the sand dollar. If I was making the stencil again, I would make have more room in between so that you aren't, don't run the risk of overlapping and getting paint where you don't want it. I also will do, would do the center part just separately. And there you have the sand dollars, the paper version. But that's not a, exactly what I'm going to end up with, so stay tuned. So I'm activating the Ink Tense pencil here, and what this is going to do is basically shade, and once it's activated, the Ink Tense is permanent. So instead of tracing with a pencil and risking having pencil marks, this is what I decided to do. And I, and I really like this idea. And I think you might see me doing more embellishments in my Build the Stash um, video series. I like this idea, so I'm gonna play with it. 
And I'm just kind of teasing the ink tense pencil there, just kind of teasing it and, and working it out so that, you know, you get some variations and stuff. If you don't like whatever, just dab it with a uh, wet uh, baby wipe or paper towel. But I like how it is. And I mean, the sand dollar is very organic and the edges don't have to look all identical. So you've got lots of leeway here. And I think it just makes it look more realistic. So this background, I used um, the Crazy Wave stencil, and there were those bubbles in there, as well as I came in with the snakeskin stencil. So I still used two stencils in the background. So I'm gluing the paper versions, and this is on basically mixed media paper. It's a little bit thicker, not just copy paper. And I like that weight, and I think that's something I'm going to be doing more of when I make my embellishments and stuff instead of just using copy copy paper. So I'm drawing that down. And then instead of gluing the third one down, which I could and it would look lovely, I'm going to put the third one, the one that's on the top, with modeling paste. So now you only have one and so when you have only one to dry and it's not layered, so a lot of the problems that I had have kind of disappeared. Also, if you're making lots of these, it's very time consuming to put one layer and dry and put one layer and dry. So um, this will help, you know, if I'm making multiple. So on the paper one, I'm just adding some more of the Inktense block just to add more shading. But I could just do the float acrylic. But I wanted to show that there's more than one way to, to do something. And it, try them, try the different techniques, and pick something that works for you. I'm just adding a little bit of that brown in the middle of the copper, just add it. Just that little extra bit of something, something. It just adds a little bit darker brown in, in amongst it. It's the little details that make things different. So now I've painted this one just exactly the same way as I painted the first version that I showed you. It has the titanium white, and then I put on a coat of the shimmery goodness on top. And, you know, you can see that there are lines from the, the palette that, you know, when I put on the modeling paste, I don't mind that. In fact, I think that just adds to it. Now I'm shading this one. I'm really, I, you know, into doing sea things. I've done lots of starfish and now the sand dollar. And I, I don't think I'm done yet. I have many ideas yet for sand for for sand dollars and and tying in with Christmas. So now that they're all pretty much done, what I'm doing is I'm using the Prussian blue and I'm floating the acrylic around the sand dollars and that's just going to make them pop from the background. Basically I'm just shading around them and hopefully you can see between the difference between this one now that it's shaded and the one that's kind of under my hand. Hopefully I you can 
see both of them closer. There you can see the difference that it makes. So I just continue to shade on all of them and add one layer, let it dry, add another. So there are the five that I created. I learned my lesson on the first one there, but I absolutely love them. I hope you do too.